Amen. Well, good morning, everybody. You know, we've all heard the prayer requests and, you know, we can laugh about some of these things, but they're really heartbreaking. Uh, but one of them, you know, my, maybe, maybe our forgetfulness, but mine especially, um, need that fixed. And actually, Joy and I, uh, we were talking, praying last night. Uh, I, I'm a, um, I'm a 60s prodigal of, of, uh, ADD. It took me a long time as a Christian to embrace that. Uh, my wife, in only ways that wives, wives can do this, uh, helped me to see it. And I had to come, I finally had to come to grips with it. And I have, uh, and I know I still have shortcomings, uh, but I also know that the Lord has blessed me to get around some of the shortcomings that I have. Uh, but I also had um, a couple strokes. One was small, no bleeders. Uh, but it messed me up. Uh, everybody's going, hey, man. Uh, it messed me up in my memory and in other things. Uh, so, I'm, uh, and the Lord's helped me around that too. Uh, the aphasia that I have, uh, words and, you know, um, but I'm praying and, you know, I, I, there's just a few things that aren't connecting like they used to, I think, in my preaching uh, and in some other things. Um and if this is what it is, then I accept that. But I just know the Lord can heal me. And and again, you know, I'm just missing something. No, no letters. Okay, no texts. But you know, you all know what you all think. You know what I'm missing. But uh, well, we can keep that uh, to a joke. Uh, we're going to go back into First Corinthians uh, chapter one. And as you go there, you know, often um, in my preaching, I always say, hey, we're going to go uh, to a certain place, and then I talk about other scriptures, and, you know, other preachers do that too, by the way. Uh, but we're going to be over in 1 Corinthians uh, 1, starting picking up back in verse 17. But, you know, there are, there's a seriousness that needs to be addressed to today with this message, because all the messages are serious, and we all know that. You know, I'm sure everybody's shaking their head, and and there's not one. There really isn't one more serious than others. As a preacher, I have thought in some messages that I've given a handful, and literally probably five at the most, that have been more important than other messages. And uh, actually, Lord has showed me that some of them weren't more important. But you know, just everything's important for us, brothers and sisters. But you know, again. As you've heard me preach and say forever that it's not what a person says, it's what he believes. It just takes a while. Sometimes it takes a long time. Uh, the Lord reveals things. Uh, there's the gift of discernment, and that's a lot of what this time that we're spending together uh, in 1 Corinthians, uh, it, it seems to be uh, more focused around the, the, the discerning of spirits or just discernment period. I And I joke all the time that, you know, Pastor James could, you know, do take, you know, this first chapter and, you know, preach until Jesus comes back. Well, I think I can too. I, I'd be good competition for him uh, in doing this. But uh, some of my favorite verses leading up to, wink, wink, uh, 1 Corinthians 1, uh, 17 is that a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in pictures of silver. Now, there's of all the verses that are written out there, that's probably for me got to be the most beautiful. Just the picture that I get uh, in my in my mind of what that is, but that word spoken that word is it's in the hebrew it's a word that's used many many times it has many different applications um the hebrew states um but one of them that is appropriate or more appropriate for the message today and and us in the new testament is our commands okay our speech you know let our speech be without covetousness, the word of God says. You know, let our speech, uh, let not let not filthy communication come out of our come out of our mouths. You know, our speech, you know, 
not the word faith negative confession, but God doesn't want us to be Eeyores. You know, I, I know an Eeyore, an Eeyore as a Christian. I, I, I know more than one, actually. Uh, but I know one that must have written the book about Eeyore. I don't get it. You know, and those, you've heard me say this, but there may be some new people out there. So y'all can go to sleep for 10 seconds here. Um, but, you know, it's in the Winnie the Pooh stories. And, and you know, Pooh would be, you know, just, just bumping around and, you know, <laughs> you know, in the in the type of temperament that he is, you know, nothing, nothing's ever a problem with him. The worst thing he says is, oh, bother. Uh, but, you know, he can look at Igor and say, what a beautiful sunny day it is. And Igor would say, yeah, but it's probably going to rain tomorrow. And that's not a good way because to be a Christian, because all the promises are yay and amen. You know, this book is written for us. And again, the second to the last chapter, the last verse of John, what, what is it? John 21, maybe? Um, I can't remember how many chapters there. Um, but it says that all the things that Jesus did in these three years, all the things that he did, all the libraries couldn't hold all the books um, the, of things that he did. But he left us enough. Okay. That's why the word is so important. And the word is also, you know, a word fitly spoken. To be fitly spoken means that we've got to have an understanding of the word of God. We, we can't make the word of God say something that it doesn't mean because God means what he says and says what he means. Uh, and this is what's happening today all over. I mean, the error and false doctrine is just beyond, you know, um, the, these new deliverance people that are out there. You know, I'm still waiting. I mean, you know, um, what's his name? Locke did an interview with Benny Hinn and, and you can see Benny ba baiting him in what to say. Uh, and, uh, but Benny, Benny's trying to snake his way since, um, uh, since he got excommunicated, so to speak, he ran out of gas with, uh, with the lies uh, of word faith and good morning, Holy Spirit garbage that he came out with. Um, you know, he's a, he's a habitual liar. Um, and I have no problem saying that because he is. And those of you that make comments, you know, when this stuff gets put up on YouTube, you're entitled to your comments, but sure wish you'd check some of this stuff out. You can think anything you want of me. I don't care. You, you know, your, your, your bad comments, they don't add to my Christianity. They don't take away from my Christianity. You know, as long as you keep them clean, I leave a lot of comments up there. You know, once you start pontificating, talking about yourself or, or you know, getting off, I'll go ahead and delete that. But for the most part, you know, it, it's go ahead and leave your negative comments up there. Or, or I'm sorry, go ahead and make your negative comments. Because other people will pray for you then, or other people might address, you know, what you're saying. Um, you know, there's a lot of things I don't address because, I mean, unless the Lord tells me, you know, when the Lord tells me to do something, I try and I try and be faithful to that. But what other people think or say, and, you know, somebody asked me about talking to somebody and I made a comment, you know, it wasn't a bad comment, by the way. It was a nice comment. It was a nice question. You know, why don't I, you know, have I ever thought about talking to this person? And why? Why? This person's already stated what they believe. There's nothing that I'm going to say that's going to change what they say, what they think. You know, they, these people, you know, they, um, they are established in what they believe. If the Lord leaves me to do that, I will. But for the most part, again, it's just, you know, wasted air so but a word fitly spoken is like uh is like sorry apples of gold and pictures uh, of silver and the word has to be fitly spoken because in order for god's word to back itself up to in order for god to say hey listen i want to show myself to you i want to show my son to you we have to be hooked on the right way. So 
uh, over in, again, I you, you think I'm not going to get over to 1 Corinthians that I am, but real quick, you know, when the disciples, now these are guys, okay, so um, you ladies do this differently. I don't get it, but I know you do this differently. But we guys, we're just, you know, we're that straight line, you know, <laughs> we don't care about all the static and, you know, the noise going on around us especially, you know, when we have an agenda. But over in, over in Matthew 18, uh, the disciples came to Jesus and they said, you know, hey, who's the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Wink, wink, how about me, Lord? What do you think? You know, I'm doing this. I'm fetching those sandwiches for you. I'm, I'm telling people over here, I'm, you know, Peter, you know, I was on the Mount of Transfiguration. And, you know, I mean, it, actually, it probably was Peter in many things because we have the uh, story of, Peter and John after the uh, after the resurrection and and uh, you know who's greatest you know you got James and John uh, you know the mom uh, saying you know hey I want this for my children and and they're sitting there going yeah mom tell them you know nothing like a good mom out there <laughs> they say they just say things that dang I'm not so sure I'd be saying that either but they can get away with that. But they asked, you know, who's greatest in heaven? So Jesus called a little child unto them. Huh? Man, you want these big burly guys, you know? Hey, look at me. You know, I, got, I got this Christian thing going in my life. Let, let me tell you about all the stories of Jesus. Let me, let me tell you about everything that I know. And Jesus called a little child unto him. And he set them in the midst of them. And you can just imagine what's going on in their head. They're they're probably thinking, maybe he didn't hear us, you know, because what in the world does this kid have to do with us? I mean, you called us. We're following you. Ugh. And verse three, Jesus verily said unto him, except you be converted, saved. And then after your salvation, after you become born again after your old life has passed away and your new life uh, becomes new you need to become as a little child and if you don't you're not going to be able to enter into the kingdom of heaven yeah it, it's this is not a talking about a loss of salvation it is talking about salvation though uh, and Jesus went on to then give a little bit more explanation as they're sitting there with their mouths open, not expecting that. Jesus said, whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is going to be greatest in heaven. Just radically and totally different from us from how we think and how we feel. Again, ladies, I admit freely, I, I, I can't think like you. I, I can learn, I can watch, you know, but you know, how you, how you put things together, you know, it's amazing to me, but um, you know, we guys are pretty simple, you know, and you ladies know that. Um, so whosoever shall home himself as a little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And there we go, brothers and sisters, is that it all comes to true humility being in our lives. And I am not the humility police. You know, I don't know about people. Again, the Lord can give discernment. And a lot of times that discernment doesn't come in a specific, oh, I got the whole understanding, Lord, because a lot of times we go to help when, you know, when we have too much information, especially, especially a guy, you know, again, ladies, maybe you too, but especially a guy, you know, when you, when you lay, you know, a husband, you know, when the wife says, you know, I'm having this problem, seriously, sometimes the wife is just saying, hey, I need you to listen to me. What the guy hears is I got to fix this. Okay. So, you know, when it comes to men and men, you know, men hear this, they want to fix, get in the middle, show what they can do. And humility calls us to die to ourselves. Humility calls us to esteem others 
more highly than ourselves. True humility calls us to, to be a blessing unto somebody else so we can receive. We don't go after the blessing. We go after the blesser by humbling ourselves because when we humble ourselves, we put ourselves at the cross where we got saved to begin with for the Lord to then minister to us. You can't help but hear the testimonies of what the Lord's doing in some people's lives. And Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, man, do that to us. And Father, right now, in Jesus' name, we bind, we rebuke any demon that would try and skew, steal, distract us right now, get thee behind us. And Father, whatever deliverance we can get from this message, Father, we want these demons out from the inside of us right now. Uh, Father, send angels. Father, change our minds. Lord, the, the, the foundation of repentance. Change our minds. Father, let us hear the truth of your word. L let us hear the apples of gold, Father, that that the that are in um, pictures of silver. Lord, let us come out in agreement because your word says that that if we come into agreement with you, by, if we come out in agreement with the devil, we can only do that by automatically coming into agreement with you, Father. We can get deliverance from that. Lord, we want to come out of church cleaner, better, closer to you. Less demons, Father. More of Jesus, less of us, less of demons. Uh, so it's important, this true humility. And it's not a teaching, okay? It, it's not, it's a truth that is more caught than taught, okay? When the Lord can get us to that place where he knows he has access to us, his power then starts to come into our lives. But that pride thing and that sin thing and, and I, 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 Think the devil through soul power, through witchcraft, through the occult, through other things. Oh, you are so good, brother. You are so good, sister. You know, all these people out there. And so many, so many lives are run by soul power and other things that come in aside from pride, aside from, you know, in that sin, things that we're allowing in our lives. And listen, dying to ourselves. We all know we we if nothing else, each one of us has accidentally tripped into dying to ourselves. Hopefully, we've you know knowingly and we we we've we've set you know that goal before us to die to ourselves. But again, you know, because the Lord's going to show us, He's going to show us how cool it is, how awesome it is to have true humility in our lives. So again, every one of us at least once has stumbled into true. Uh, uh, humility uh, in our lives. And when that happens, the gates of heaven, okay, not the gates of hell, the gates of heaven just open up to us and the Lord blesses us so that we're not telling people how great we are. Okay. We're not, we're not always going around wanting, we're not an advertisement for what, G now again, we do become in one way an advertisement, and that is when we walk, you know, when we're out, our light is supposed to shine, and somehow, some way, you know, uh, people look and they think they know there's something, there's a draw there from the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit does the drawing, not us. We can do the witnessing, we can lay the tracks, we can talk to whoever, but He draws people to us at those times that they're open, other than that. We're just doing what we can to, you know, to, to, you know, have Jesus in front of us in some way, uh, some shape or form. But true humility comes into our lives. It's a gift. And there's got to be a place in our lives that's open for that gift. And as we allow the Lord to do this, and it's hard, it's difficult. You know, this is part of you know, if you've ever read uh, DeHan's, DeHan's book uh, or F.B. Meyer's book on, on suffering, the uh, F.B. Meyer uh, book on uh, the gift of suffering. <laughs> yeah, well, let's read that one next. You know, we don't want any of this stuff in our lives. But brothers and sisters, we need this in our lives. And, and 
we don't want it because you and I are sitting back going, yeah, I, I got enough going on in my life. These demons are chewing on me. The Pac-Man demons are, are behind me trying to, trying to, you know, take another chunk out of my backside. Now I got this going on with my family and I got all this over here and, I, and I've got all this. And Jesus is just trying to get us to a place where we'll stand still long enough where we can hear that still small voice because when the Lord changes us, when the Lord reaches in and grabs and rips out, you know, that stuff that he wants to get out of us, it doesn't hurt us. What hurts us is getting to that place. Oh, oh, you know, uh, um, again, I gave you, you know, my, my drug, my drug experience, you know, other things too, by the way. But I mean, of course the drug thing was my biggest problem, you know, and, and, you know, in my mind's eye, I just, oh, oh, you know, I just, before the Lord delivered me, you know, and my fighting against it was so wimpy. I mean, I, you know, if you looked up wimpy in the dictionary at that time, my picture was there because I had no power over this. But one day the Lord brought that power into my life. He knew it was time. I, I was submitting myself. I was failing. I, I, I was I was miserable, you know, I was backsliding, but I wanted this thing out of my life, and I kept submitting myself. I kept going before the Lord. I kept getting deliverance for this problem. Almost all almost every single service. I know people were tired of praying for me. But one day, one day I came off the floor and I was free. And the Lord wants to get us to these places. And it, that's what hurts is to get to, you know, the sweating and the, you know, oh, the soreness of, of the muscles and, you know, or whatever. It's like our daily bread. You know, we take a little, take a little nibble of it. Ugh, it's all bitter and until we swallow it. And it becomes life on the inside of us. See, he wants us to come out of this human thing. Now, he left us. In the flesh, okay? Well, we can talk. We know why, but, you know, if we really want to know the details, we probably don't want to know the details. You know, we can ask God when we get home, but, you know, he left us in the flesh to deal with these things, you know, because, as it says over in Hebrews, you know, we, we, we've not resisted sin in our lives to the point of shedding our blood. See, what it takes to get into the occult, okay? The thing, I'm not talking about the witch wannabes. I'm not talking about, you know, the witches that, you know, you know, or, you know, they do whatever and the demons trick them. The demons will, the demons will do just enough to reveal themselves to them. And then they, you know, they want to crave all that stuff more and more. And the demons will then just lead them down all these false paths. And they think they're doing something and they're not really doing anything. But there is witchcraft out there that is powerful, not more powerful than the word of God or, or we saying get to behind us in Jesus name. But there is there is a, a, a type of witchcraft, a type of the occult that's out there that is very powerful. Listen, those magicians in, in Moses day, they didn't do that because they were ignorant people. OK, but in order for a person to get to that place. The things they have to be willing to give up or the things they have given up. Maybe children, relationships, whatever. You know, the things that you have to prove to the devil, prove to Lucifer that you can follow him. It's going to cost you not just your life, but it's going to cost you lives around you also. It's going to cost you things that are dear to you. Well, our God's not like that. Our God, he just wants to know that we mean business. And then all that other garbage, he'll just take it out of us. And we, we won't suffer. Not, I mean, there may be a time when, you know, we're struggling against sin. The word says, you know, we don't struggle against sin to the point of shedding our blood. But when it comes time to the Lord getting that problem out, listen, that problem when when that many year addiction and i mean two thousand dollars a week and that was 40 years ago okay it was, it was a lot you know and, and all the other things that, that were going on in my life 
And God just said, you're done. I'm, I'm going to take that out of you now. Are we willing to do that? Are we willing to resist sin? Are we willing to go before the Lord? You know, we hear others and, and, and properly, I mean, um, correctly preaching, you know, examine yourself to see if you be in the faith. But the problem, and there's no problem with that, but the problem that we run into with ourselves sometimes is that we do and we think we're okay. Okay, we're not open. There, there's a blockage there, okay? And we're not open because we still have demons. Okay. Brothers and sisters, Pastor Mike, Michael, deal with your demons. That's what it all comes down to. Because the Lord's not going to share his glory with another. And I, you say, yeah, we're going to get over to 1 Corinthians because that's on the next page. So, you know, putting on humbleness of mind, Colossians 3.12, isn't we just reach and say, hey, I'm putting on humbleness of mind. It comes by humility. It comes by, it comes by being embarrassed and and it it comes by being at a party when you're when you're when legs are being grown and you're just a pompous jerk like me and you get to the last person uh in, in the chairs uh, of hey we're gonna we're gonna grow legs and the guy turns around and he only has one leg oops hamna 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 I wonder where my faith was then. I didn't have any. All I had was pride. See, it, it's it, when those things come into our lives, we 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 grab them. We say, "Wow, Lord, <laughs> ooh, I sure am bad." We can be nothing. We can do nothing because we are nothing except in Jesus. But if it's not Jesus and nothing else, then it's not Jesus at all. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 17, Paul said Jesus didn't send me to baptize, even though baptism is good. He says, but to preach the gospel. See, Paul knew where the Lord planted him to grow. We don't. We want to do this. We want to do that. Man, oh man, you know, true humility is to just... One of the neatest things, you know, again, I just, I had the opportunity, the Lord blessed me with the opportunity to be around Pastor Worley and, uh, and behind closed doors. Um, but, you know, like everybody else, open doors also. Yeah. And he'd tell these stories. And I remember he told us, told me a story one time about a friend of his in Bible college uh, who um, he would do, he would do um, meetings with this. They build Pastor Worley as a singer and they build the other guy uh, as the preacher. And they would go around these country churches years ago uh, in, when he was in Bible college. Uh, and he'd be pre they'd be preaching. And he just loved to sing. So he would sing. He didn't care. And But in a conversation one time with this close friend of his, you know, he found out that he had to have that first place. He had. And, and Pastor, he said it just really threw him because he thought it was a team effort. He, he thought it was that, you know, we all find our place, you know, and he used the example. <laughs> he, he didn't know a football from a, from a baseball, okay? He didn't know a football from a hockey puck. Uh, but he used the example uh, of a football is that, you know, it's, it's a team effort. And, you know, the one guy that grabs the ball is not the rest of the team trying, unless you're rugby or whatever, maybe, you know, trying to grab the ball. Give me the ball. Give me the ball. See, everybody wants the ball. Everybody wants to be something instead of just being nothing. I love being nothing. I don't have to be a pastor. I, I, I have a responsibility, and that's what I do. But I don't need this. I, listen, I love what I do, okay? But I, I'm a great piece of I'm so glad to be saved. I'm so glad to be a part of, of what the Lord. Man, oh, man, he saved me. He saved you. He saved us. What else? What else could there be? We've, we've made it already. Because he has us do other things. You know, there's just, 
Listen. I was traveling because Pastor Worley couldn't, not because I'm I'm somebody. I I I was asked to do to travel and do messages because he couldn't do that anymore, not because I was some great speaker or whatever. This is just something the Lord put on his heart because there are other qualified people. And it's got a text that's probably telling me to be quiet. For Christ, you ever, you ever gonna get the first Corinthians chapter one? <laughs> I love you. <laughs> For Christ sent me not to baptize, uh, but to preach the gospel, to evangelize, to proclaim, not with wisdom of words. So they people have the gift of gab. And I'm listen, I'm not talking to anybody specifically, okay? I'm talking to all of us. Me too. Listen. Me too. How about me in first place? Okay. You know, but just because we can talk, and I don't think I can anymore. I, I have this problem with, with getting words and you know, but he says. He says, not with wisdom of words and ooh -wee. And you look at that social media and everybody's out there and telling you how good they are. And look at this wrinkle that I found. Look at that wrinkle that I found. Look at this and look at that. And Jesus is this still small voice, you know, in the corner going, hey, I'm over here. I'm over here. Excuse me. Hello. But everybody's too noisy doing their own thing. Oh, this is what God told me to do. Well, maybe he did. You know, the hand and the feet and, you know, the rest of the body. It has to do what it's doing. So not everybody's bad, but there sure is a lot of bad out there. And the restraining power of the Holy Spirit is leaving. Every day it gets, it gets less and less. And there's a vacuum there. You know, it's either Satan or Lucifer. I mean, it's either Jesus or Lucifer. And so as Jesus leaves, Lucifer just moves in and takes over and he is very good one thing about deliverance people and and listen i i'm a deliverance person okay and i have to be careful that you know that i make sure that i too understand that this devil's very good at deceiving us these demons are really good at how to tickle us and nudge us talk to us and show us things they're really good and we're open to that because our flesh craves these things our flesh crave oh man you know that's why paul says put to death the things that are operating in your members he doesn't say just smack them in the head and say get get in line these things these demons are never going to get in line they want you and i destroyed and and maybe they can't get us to a place where we're on medication and you know we're fragmented all over the place or whatever. They'll they'll get us to a place where the Holy Spirit is frozen in our lives. Jesus never leaves us nor forsakes us. He doesn't. We don't lose our salvation, but the Holy Spirit just steps aside because of the last three or four verses of this chapter that I'm not going to get to today. For Christ, and again, brothers, this is who I am, you know, hopefully, I, and I need to be better. I'm praying. I'm trying to change some things in my preaching because um, I'm hoping, you know, I'm getting with the Lord. I'm, I'm telling him how I feel about certain things that are, I'm just missing something. And, you know, so I'm spending a lot of time here, but well, I guess we'll just see, you know where the Lord takes it. He says, God didn't, the Lord, Jesus didn't send me to preach the gospel with wisdom of words because then the cross of Christ is then made of no effect. And the cross of Christ is not a one-time deal uh, for any of us. Verse 18, for the preaching of the cross is to them that aren't saved, them that are going to hell, those that are going to spend the eternity uh, whatever about hell, you know, whatever about the torment that, that's there. I can't even begin to explain that. But what I can explain is that we will spend an eternity separated 
from God and Jesus Christ. And Jesus is the bishop and shepherd of our souls. Can you imagine having no, no, no governing with your soul? These people, these people that are going to be in hell are going to be crazy. They're going to be nuts. They're, they're going to be angry. Not, 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 not just angry. They're going to, they're going to be so, they're going to be serving their fist in God's face, hating God because God is love and there's going to be no love. God is light. There's going to be no light. It's going to be so dark. If, if the fear of having to deal with not, not being able to see, you're not going to be able to see, period. I, I don't get it, okay? But listen, when we reject God in this life, we don't have any God in the next one or any of God in the next one. I, again, whew, now for the preaching of the cross to them that perish foolishness, but unto us who are saved, it is the power of God, not our power, not words, not soul power like so many Christians. So, and so many deliverance people are operating in, in soul power. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. Oh, this isn't just talking about the lost. I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where are the wise? Where, where are the where are the the lawyer the, the the Christians who have lawyer demons? Now, where are the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Well, they can tell you everything about what's going on in the world, but they can't tell you about what's going on in their life with Jesus. Oh, they can tell you about it. They can't demonstrate it. There's a, there's a disconnection. He says, has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? And again, a lot of messages could be preached on that. Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? He says, uh, and this is one of my, uh, this is again, one of my favorite verses. When the Lord showed me this verse, I, I it just blew me away. I, it may not be. There's a few of those verses out there that just tickle me, you know. You know, for if, the, for if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we will be of all people most miserable. Uh, that's one of them. Uh, another one is later on in, in Corinthians where uh, that the time has come when uh, those that have wives be of those that don't have any. That's not telling us to leave our wife. There's a, there's a, there's a truth there that's really neat. Um, but but this is one of those, when the Lord showed me this one. For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. Huh? So in the wisdom of God, God made sure that the world, because of God's wisdom, didn't know him. Well, come on. What do you mean by that? Everybody knows God. All the religions know God. You know, everybody knows God, but they don't know a thing about him, do they? Because if they did, they'd fall on their knees. They, uh, you know, I'm here in my mind's eye, you know, when I get to heaven, how many eons am I going to be on my knees, not even picking up my head? I'm so unworthy. We are, you know, you know Christ made us worthy, but, you know, Wow, I mean, which one of us? Remember Pastor Worley's story about the Lord took him in a vision and he was at the, he was at the cross and the blood was dripping down on his hands? I get goosebumps when I think about that. I've not had that, and that's okay. You know, all these people, they want, they want to see demons. They want, or they, they think, man, if if we saw demons, we'd be on we'd be on diapers. It would scare the you know what out of us, and would have to go somewhere. So after, because of God's wisdom, God made sure the world didn't know Him, because why? Because it pleased God 
by the foolishness of preaching, and I, you know, you look that up in a Christian dictionary, and you see my face there, okay? Not foolish preaching. My, my face is also there sometimes. But by the foolishness of preaching, and that's what I'm doing right now, okay? And a lot of other people are much better than I am. But by the foolishness of preaching, it pleased God that by the foolishness of preaching to save them that are that believe, that are going to believe. So God said, hey, you're not going to find Jesus in the Bible college. You're not going to find Jesus in the seminary. You're going to find out about him, but you're not going to find him. And we know about Jesus. Woo, we know about Jesus. But we don't know him from a hole in the ground when it comes to a lot of truth that the word of God says. We dabble in this. We dabble in that. You know, we, we live this life. We, uh, you know. Uh, all things are lawful unto me. We don't bother to read that all things are not expedient uh, after that. You know, we just allow all these things uh, in our lives. Of course, we don't tell anybody about it, uh, but we do, you know. And it's just wrong, brothers and sisters. I don't care. I really don't. I don't judge you. The Word of God already judges you. I don't have to judge you. It's wrong to, it's wrong to talk. It's wrong to drink. It's wrong to swear, okay? It's wrong. It, 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 there's just so many things that are wrong. And the word of God is clear about it. And you, know, and you go to any so-called Christian bookstore and, and, you know, on alcohol, you know, and find out a book or put all the books together of why it is okay. You know, why, why take a little wine for your tummy's sake. It's not even really talking about that, but... Well, it is, but for a different reason. Um, you know, and again, as the saying goes, how, how many gallons of that swill are people partaking in? Well, I like, you know, it kind of relaxes me at the end of the day. It's idolatry. It's witchcraft. It's the occult. So you need something? So our trust in the Lord is not good enough? Well, there's nothing wrong with it. So you can justify it to yourself. And again, I don't care. I love you. Okay. Because, never mind. <laughs> Let's move on. I'm almost done here. So after, after in the wisdom of God, the world by God's wisdom didn't know God because it pleased God only through the preaching of God's word. And, and not just the preaching of God's word, but God's word. Well, the preaching. Not not just what I'm doing here now, but the preaching is when we're witnessing to somebody, when, when we're demonstrating to somebody our Christianity while we're not swearing and cussing and carousing and flirting and having our eyes all over the place. I've been there, okay? And, I, and listen, I'm not perfect in any way, shape, or form, but I thank God for 2 Corinthians 10.5. It works. Try it. See, my problem wasn't not knowing the Word of God. My problem was applying the Word of God. And again, I'm no, I'm still nobody. Okay, I, I, I'm no different than anybody else. I am you, and you are me. Okay, but this stuff works if we apply it. And so you won't find you won't find Jesus anywhere, except in the preaching of Him, and the preaching's got to be a word fitly spoken. Okay, it can't be, this is what I think about Jesus. This is what I think what the word of God says. You know, if you're okay with the word of God, then memorize the book of James. Memorize it and do it. So he says, the Jews, they require a sign. Show me, show me, show me. Kind of sounds like us. The Greeks seek after wisdom. Or, you know, and this, this is the social problem today, brothers and sisters. The social problem is, is, the, is the evil Gnosticism that's being pumped into our ears and our eyes by all these things that are out there. You know, did God say? Because that's, that's all the social media is. It's just the devil in another form saying, did God say? He did. 
He says, but we preach Christ crucified. The suffering. We, we, you heard the testimony today. We, we come to a knowledge of what Jesus did again, you know, to just to have an inkling that what they did to him, just getting, forget about, no, let's not forget about the cross. You know, just the things that again, King James says that nobody would be able, nobody would even know who was up there had they not known who was up there. What did they do to this man? And God never left him, by the way. Eli, Eli, Sali, Labathami, Labakami, whatever the Greek says. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That's the cry of a human being who uh, none of us would have been able to get up there in the first place. But we'd say the same thing. But in the Old Testament, it, you know, it, it shows us that God never left his son. Again, just another erroneous teaching, just 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 another obstacle, another hurdle, you know, for us to have to jump over to get to the real Jesus. He says, but we preach Christ crucified under the Jews of stumbling blocks. Huh? Well, that's because the curse is on you. You got the double curse and your family. But under the Greeks, you're an idiot. Well, I'm an idiot for, for Jesus. I hope you are too. But unto them which are, are called both Jew and Greek, Jesus is the power of God. And so much of this other power that is going on in people's lives. You know, uh, you know what's her name? Crick. What a heretic. What a, I, again, since we have social media, we look into some of these people. Catherine Crick, you know, and how she's now hooked up. Uh, with with uh, uh, so um, um, oh, I want to call him Salvador. That's not his name. Uh, um, sorry, I, I can't get his name right now. Uh, but you know, I'm the guy who did the movie on Cats Not Demons with with Benny Hinn and more, more. I mean, again, I, I got notes and you know I'm keeping track, but I'm trying not to get too distracted from what the Lord wants us to know. And and there's no power there. There's no real power there. They're not gay. Now, God may sovereignly be delivering them, but you can quote me, and please feel free to do so. Okay? These people aren't getting deliverance. It's a show. It's the dog and pony show. It's it's the sleight of hand show. Who step right up, step right up. Look at all the deliverance over here when you're getting demons. And these people that are out there just touching. Come on, come on, Jesus. You're so full of pride and ignorance. Get deliverance. If you want to be in deliverance, humble yourself. Deal with your own demons first. Yeah, I know. All right. Yeah, Isaiah, sell, sell, sell devour. Just another one of these guys. Thank you. Yeah, you know, but and these guys sound good. Listen, and they know the verbiage. Oh, breaking curses and ungodly soul ties because they've read the books. They probably never got any deliverance, or they've gotten so little. And that's the problem with us is that we have demons, and God's not going to use us, but the devil will. Listen, if these demons can can somehow deceive us or distract us to freeze the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We'll never know it until everything else falls apart. But Jesus is the power of God. And he's the wisdom of God. And again, there's just, there's no way around this, brothers and sisters. I, I don't know how else to say it. You know, I mean, I'm not clever enough. I There's no way around this. There's no back door. There's no shortcut. There's no map. There's no rubbing of the shoulders of somebody. There's no being with a reading of somebody that's going to get us to this place. Okay. It says clearly here, and I'm going to stop here because um, it will take another message just to get through the rest. Probably. I hope not. You can pray for me. Please do. Seriously. I need prayer, but unto them, which are, are called both Jew and Greek, both whoever else is out there. Christ is the power of God in the wisdom of God. 
Wow. Again, just one of those verses that just, you know, the rockets, red glare, bombs burst in an air, go off. What a revelation that, you know, because you and I, and, and we've done it, and we believe it to a certain extent or whatever, or at least we, we believe it to a certain extent when it's a sunny day and we're in our convertible going downhill with the top down, you know, with our with the wind to our back or whatever, you know. But there's some bad times coming. There's going to be food shortages. There's, there's going to be connection shortages. Listen, and the Lord's allowing this. We can pray and ask the Lord for mercy. Ask the Lord for more time. Maybe that's all we need to do. There's some bad times coming. Because the Lord is going to allow this just like, just like how many times has God said, this is bad, this is bad, this is bad, this is bad, this is bad. It's like, it's like a mom or dad, this is bad. Don't, 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 don't. Until the kid says, well, I, I'm just going to do it anyway. And finally parents are in, and just, you know, being exhausted. All right. And they allow, ah! and the kid finds out. When are we going to find out? Because there are consequences to our disobedience. Lord, help me. Help all of us. So this Jesus that I've been talking about, make sure you ask him to come into your life and save you from your sins. Listen, we're all going down the same road. There, there's no other road, okay? And these demons are trying to pick us off. They're on both sides trying to pick us off. We need to be careful. Make sure we have the right Jesus in our lives that's the one of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That's the one in John 7, 38 that says, believe on me as the word of God says. See, that's the problem today is that, is that you and I hopefully can put the word of God next to a lot of things that are going on and just show it for what it is. But that doesn't change our minds because we want something different. And that's, that's the thing. We need our wanters fixed. We need our wanters delivered of the demons that are that are running. So make sure you ask this Jesus to come into your life and save you from your sins. And it's real simple to do. Just Lord Jesus, if I've never asked you in my heart or into my life before, I'm asking you here now. Come into my heart, come into my life and save me from my sins. And if you'll do that, he'll do that. He'll come in and he'll change you from the inside out. Again, good in, good out, good in, good out. Bad in, bad out. And, you know, read, uh, you can't find it, you might be able to find it on eBay or in one of these um, Abe's uh, types of places, um, you know, the beautiful side of evil. You know, the devil knows what he's doing, but just, we, we're the ones that are ignorant, which we shouldn't be, because we, we, have, uh, we have pictures of gold, or we have, uh, we're as fitly spoken in pictures of gold, except of that verse. Um, you know, we have all these things now, but so, uh, but if you're here today and you're driven, harassed, and tormented, this is producing a compulsive behavior in your life, slowing down, stopping, or turning around your spiritual growth and progress is what demons are doing in the life of the believer. Have you heard what's going on? Have you seen what's going on? The, uh, the scandal now, it's not, it's not gonna, it's not gonna, it's just gonna put a small dent in dominionism, uh, but. The idolatry and the witchcraft and everything. And it's going to be interesting to see what the devil does uh, in the uh, in the IHOP place. And they 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 ain't selling pancakes, brothers and sisters. They're in the international house of demons, is what's going on out of, that, out of that Kansas City thing. So you know whatever you say. Well, God's probably cleaning the house. Well, he, he might be a little bit, but you know it may be a straw dog. That the devil set up, and so he's got something else to deceive. Because you know it, it, these people, these these things that people do, it's like they live in a cat box, you know. And after a while, the cat box gets full, and you know, no matter where you walk around that thing, dang, there's something wrong with that. Well, then the devil just puts on different clothes. So, well, he's very good at what he does. So. But uh, you can get deliverance today. You can ask the Lord to give you deliverance at Hegwish. Uh, they're going to start praying. This is why This is why a physical place to be able to go to, you know, our, our men's conference at the end of the month is going to be. So if people can go and get deliverance, get people who hug. Come on, in Jesus' name. Man, I'm telling you, they're, woohoo. 
You know, I mean, it's, it's okay on Zoom. And I, I, I think the Lord's in it. I think the Lord's in this, this time of prayer. But man, just to have somebody there is so nice. People who care and love. And, and you can have that. This is this is why the, the real deliverance churches are so, the few that are out there are so important to go to. Say, hey, I love y'all. And Lord willing, I'll see you here, there, or in the air.